good level on that. I'm sorry, David. I'm just warming up. <laughs> Don't mind me. Life is a challenge. How do you get through it? Laughing at the dark and dirty. We walk you through all the naughty secrets of the adult industry, and you get to be a fly on the wall with two best friends in the business of boobs. We want to hear your dirty secrets too. If you have stories to share, questions for us, need advice, then send us an email to twndpodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 702-900-6446. We'll always be laughing here. It's our favorite way to cope. If you like what you hear, hit the subscribe button, share with a friend, and leave us a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. And we thank you for coming this week. Does it go this long? I don't think it normally actually goes that long. Welcome back to the Totally Wholesome Not Dirty Podcast. I am Molly Stewart, and I am broadcasting to you live in this moment, but not when you're hearing this now, from my bedroom. Now, if you do not follow the podcast on social media at TWND Podcast, if you want to go get a follow, please do, because you're missing out on the news that... Um, while the last two episodes may seem like they were done recently and in the podcast room, they were done recently-ish, but not as recent as this, because something has happened, and I think it was from the Ouija board. So for those of you who are unaware, um, the podcast room flooded along with half my house, and this was coming the night of... The recording of our Halloween episode, all right? The Ouija board went amok. We didn't say goodbye. There was too much talking over each other. Something happened. It unleashed a ghost, a spirit, and it flooded the house. I don't really know what to tell you. Um, I'm going to think that that's what it was because, like, what else could it possibly be? So I shit you not. Um, I'm not even a woo-woo person. Like, I think it's all funny and I watch it from afar. I am not a woo-woo person. I have woo-woo friends. I understand the woo-woo. I understand liking the things, right? I actually took that damn Ouija board the morning after, and I, I, I thanked it for the opportunity to redo half of the house at a time that I didn't want to do it, but maybe it was necessary, and to thank for the opportunity to do this. And then I moved that little, I moved that little planchette, is that what they call it, the planchette? And I moved it to goodbye. I think it's still here because it's just been like a constant string of shit since that happened. Um, and that's probably not what it is. I probably did something in a former life to elicit this happening right now. But I'm trying to see it as a positive because I am a person who is more inclined to be negative. I think I'm like a very cynical person. I kind of always have been for as long as I can remember anyway. But I don't know. Um, I'm trying very hard to be positive because I think that there's been too much negative, right? And it's easy to look at it and say, hey, half the house flooded and now you have nowhere to shoot episodes and you've been losing your mind because there are dehumidifiers running in your house at all times just to make sure that nothing else potentially goes wrong, like things can just grow in the walls. Never mind that all of the walls are ripped down to suds. Never mind that there's no carpet. Never mind that <laughs> there's no washer and dryer and that's all in the garage. We're not going to worry about that. Why? Because this brings about a opportunity. The podcast room will rise like a phoenix from the ashes whoo, into the sky. I wonder where the phoenix thing originated from. I should definitely look that up, but it's going to come back better than before. And here's the thing. Was a lot destroyed? Yes. Were a lot of things fucked up? Absolutely. However, there's been so many things in my life that have been fucked up, right? And I'm still here. I'm fine. I'm alive. And don't we have to give some sort of thanks to whatever powers that be that at the end of the day, we're here, we're living and we're sur thriving. We're not surviving. We're sur thriving because the, at any time something bad happens, right? You can look at it and you can just dwell on it and you can think, oh, this is the worst thing in the world. And then a couple of years down the line, you're like, it wasn't really that big of a deal. So many worse things or other things have happened since then. And everything just becomes a distant memory because even bad moments, things that seem catastrophic in the moment, right? They're little blips because our lives are so much longer than we actually think that they are. Like when you, 
Just look back at like, like when 2020, just look back at the COVID year, the COVID times that feels like a whole lifetime ago, but it was very recent. Think about how much has changed in your life, even in the last year. And some of you, maybe more than others, for sure, that everybody goes through different cycles of time. But I think that everyone changes a lot on like a year to year basis. And maybe it's not everyone. Maybe it's just, maybe that's just how I'm feeling right now. I don't know. Do y'all ever get into, this is totally unhinged. So um, I'm trying to think, do y'all ever get into like, do you love the pod? Of course you do. Do you love ads? Not so much. Do you want to prove how much you love the pod? Then join us ad-free on patreon.com slash TWND podcast. Every tier of support gets you day early releases and ad-free enjoyment. The Totally Wholesome Not Dirty podcast is made possible by listeners like you. If you want the full VIP experience, join any of our dirtbag tiers, which also gives you access to skits, photo sets, bonus episodes, and monthly Zoom chats where we sit down, reflect, share, and more. You'll also have access to Thought Takes, a mini show where I strip down and go in hard with rantisodes. What are you waiting for? Join us and be a dirtbag at patreon.com slash TWND podcast. <sighs> oh, I lost my train of fucking thought. Because uh, I'm solo, so I guess we can talk about this. Um, I'm solo today. Um, uh, despite all the things going on here in my little space and all this, everybody else has external shit going on too. So things were just, the episode had to get out. This is, you get me. So I'm sorry. This, so this is going to be completely unhinged. This is going to be like thought takes, except you don't get to have me in my underwear and it's for an hour, which is insane. So I'm really sorry, but, um, you can always turn this off. But don't, because I think it's going to be fun. Because I've actually put a little bit of thought into this, despite the rant and despite the fact that I was going to say something, do you ever feel like? And I forgot where I was going with that. It's times like this that I wish that I had David here. But I just like look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, what were you saying? Can, can I dead eye myself enough to remember what the f*** it was that I was trying to say? No, I can't. It doesn't matter. Thinking about life. Thinking about change. Oh, we're talking about change. I think everybody gets those moments where you just get itchy and you're like, something is shifting. I don't really know what it is yet. And it's kind of scary because you're like, just certain things maybe aren't bringing you the same type of fulfillment that they did, you know, in recent or distant times, whatever it may be. And it just feels like you're at this point where... <sighs> You have like these obligations, you have these things that you know that you're supposed to do, you have like a circle of people, you have like a routine, but everything just starts feeling off. And I don't really know how else to explain it as other than like going through your day to day, right? But you kind of feel like you're just watching yourself do the things like you're not like fully in it. You're feeling like you're outside of it, kind of perceiving it. Like what is going on and why does this feel different? And you can't really put your finger on it. Right. But I think everybody gets those moments and you know, something big is going to change. And I don't know what those changes are going to be. And it's really freaky, the not knowing. Cause I'm, I'm very much a person that always likes to plan. And then I know that the plans always get f***ed up. Like every f plan never goes according to it. And that's all I know. Like, it's just a big cosmic joke. So, um, I don't remember where I was going with that, but change is important. Change is good. And you should try to welcome it. And we are going to try to stay positive. And we don't know what episodes are going to look like going forward for the foreseeable future right now. Cause I don't know how long repairs are going to take. And it's just a lot. It's just a lot. You ever feel like you're just getting like crushed? Like, have you ever seen, um, I see these on Instagram sometimes and it's this girl and she wears all these outfits and then there's like a hydraulic press, right? And it's just like crushing items because it's so satisfying type videos, right? But she wears outfits that correlate to what's being crushed and she like does this dramatic like crumples and explosions and stuff and it's really cool. So I wish I knew what her handle was, but I don't. You've probably seen it. So what we are going to jump into today is first, we're going to address some voicemails and some emails. And then David and I had a little think tank sesh when he was out here, which was a great episode, by the way. Last week's episode was really fun. David's great. David, you're fucking great. Pat your damn self on the back. And um, 
what we're going to do from there is look up old myths. So things growing up, like if you eat like a watermelon seed, it will like grow a watermelon in your stomach. Fun stuff. What we're going to try to do is pick through those and see what's real and what's not. And I feel like a lot of it is going to be not. All right. Um, oh, do I also have to address my trip to LA? I think I'm going to have to talk about my trip to LA because I don't normally enjoy going to LA. And honestly, LA on a whole, it just, ugh. Ugh. it's so, ugh. it's just gross. But I actually had a really, really good experience and it was because of the people, which was very cool. So maybe I'll talk about that later. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll forget. I don't really fucking know. So we're going to jump into emails right now and you'll see my nice little podcast sticker right there somewhere it's nice i've not really done this with the laptop since the very beginning of the show actually i don't even know what the show is is anyone listening anymore if you're listening pause right now and i want you to call 702-900-6446 leave me a voicemail telling me that at this point 10 minutes in you're still listening because dear god i feel like it's been 20 and i still have 40 more to go so bear with me as we continue forward. All right. So first we are coming in from David. And then we have something about the supernatural, which I'm very excited about. I've been listening to true crime and like spoopy podcasts. It's called Morbid. Um, you should listen to it if you like stuff like that. Because I think that it's fucking great. And they do a great job like researching all the stories that they talk about. And it's really fun. So, um... What's I talking about? Morbid. Oh, the supernatural. Um, so supernatural email will be next. But first we have David. Uh, not producer David. For those who are new to the show, this is David, one of our dirt bags. So, sub dangerous duo duodenum duo denims duo denims. Well, it's not a duo today, but Laura will hear this later. Not literally. It just sounds cool. I really don't know how to say that. Onomatopoeia. Oh no, hang on. Oh no, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> David, what are you doing to me? All right. Oh no, O N O M A T O P O E I A. The formation of a word from a sound associated with what it is named. Okay. Anamadapia. Anamadapia. I'm not. Oh, it just muted. That's cool. <laughs> I've never worked a computer before, clearly. Onomatopoeia. 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 I love that. That's a great fucking word. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. I think that's the name of this episode is Onomatopoeia. I love it. All right. Um, this is to the dirt bags via our humble hosts. Not that I personally mind or anything, but why am I the only dirt bag emailing on a constant basis? That is what I would like to know. David, that is what I would be very interested to learn. Why, out of those who are subscribed to Peter, who show up for Zoom chats for for the pumpkin carve off, with, which, which was a great success, congratulations to John and David. But John, while you're out here making a big nose, big dick pumpkin, you never you never considered you're going to send an email? No, maybe a little voicemail? Nah, not even a text. It's crazy. It's fucking madness. What kind of what kind of organization are we running here? Huh? What kind of club is this? What kind of fan base are you? You're not even, you know, oh, you just want me to scream into the abyss? You like when I just scream ah, into the abyss? That's what you like. Huh? You just like making me feel like I'm fucking crazy, like I'm just talking to a void. You're out there, you're listening. I know. I see you. I've seen your face. Well, not all of you, but some of you. Some of you, y'all, who are not showing your faces on Zoom chat. It's weird and we all think you're masturbating. So you're going to have to figure that out because it's a little strange. I'm not going to lie to you. But why? Hmm? Por qué? Why? Why not? Email the podcast, twndpodcast at gmail.com because I find it a little bit offensive with how much that I personally shared, not only pictures of my butthole, not for Patreon, but you know, other places. The thing that I have shared, the, the knowledge I have imparted, the, the mistakes that I have ruminated on over, over the airways and you listen to them and you consume them and you have nothing to give back to me? Huh? David does. So we're going to move on. 
Dirtbags, where are you at? Come on now, time to represent. We have before us a chance to gain an audience from two of the most fantastic people alive. Exactly. Thank you. A little interactivity never hurt nobody. Know what I'm saying? To be proud and loud from the crowd who's largely endowed, why are we paying Patreon if we aren't getting it on? How is Laura and Molly to proceed despite our folly? How are? That's what it should say. I don't, I don't mean to be one of those people, but I do because I am one of those people. <laughs> How are? All right, thank you. Why even have a hacky sack if we don't intend to give it a whack? We got to use the fumes that we inhaled from the host's costumes and so on. I could rhyme all day, but I sense that's not the way. I will personally draw a portrait of the next dirtbag who emails or leaves a voicemail. I promise. So, please, David wants to draw you. David wants to turn you into a caricature. Please interact with the podcast because, seriously, it has been three years and I get to hear all the time, oh, listen to the podcast and oh, I love the podcast. Oh, the podcast is so fun. It's so funny. Oh, I'd love to be on the podcast. What? Then where are you? Huh? Yeah. Oh, well, I just feel like a fucking crazy person because I sit here in a room talking to myself and to Laura. Maybe Laura's not even real. I don't know. I need confirmation from people who are out there in the airwaves. I could be dead for all I know. I might. This might be a figment of my imagination. Maybe I'm not even here. That could very much be the case. I'm hearing an echo. I think it's just because I'm being very loud. So I'm not sorry about that. But we are going to move on to a supernatural. And I love the supernatural idea. Even like... It's actually funny to think about the fact that we did a Ouija board for the Halloween episode and then my house flooded from the hot water heater bursting everywhere and making me much wetter than I ever wanted to be. It made the whole house wet. My whole house was fucking horny from the water heater burst. It's just fucking crazy. So, but it's funny to think about the fact that I didn't say goodbye on the Ouija board and this happened. I got myself a fucking poltergeist. Oh. Peeves makes me think of Peeves from Harry Potter. I'm such a loser. All right, um, Supernatural. This is from Adrian. Oh, Adrian, thank you so much. So at least Adrian has his shit together. We're good about that. Mm. Just gotta take a sip of my water. You like hearing that? Mm. Ah, that's the sound of liquid IV. Do you know? How many people don't know that they're dehydrated? And you could be one of them. And you don't want to walk around with crusty lips, dry, flaky skin, and ugh, cotton mouth. Don't even get me started. You need to experience better hydration today. And do you know how you can do that? With our friends at liquidiv.com. You can use code TWND at liquidiv.com to save 15% and get free shipping on everything that you purchase. You can experience better hydration today when you get that Liquid IV delivery on your doorstep. And I drink this shit every fucking day. I love the sugar free flavors. I love the rainbow sherbet. I love the white grape. I love the peach. Or is it, it's something grape. It's white peach. It's something grape. I don't know. They're all fucking delicious. And I like sea berry. I like guava. I pretty much have not met a stick of liquid IV that I didn't like. And one stick of liquid IV dissolved in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more effectively than water alone with the help of CTT technology, transporting more than five essential vitamins into your bloodstream. It has all the Bs. It's got potassium. And when you take that, mm, uh, that sip, Try not to orgasm because you might be in public. If you're home alone, you can totally do it. Let it out because honestly, I love Liquid IV and Liquid IV loves us and they love you. So go to liquidiv.com, use code TWND to save 15% and get free shipping on everything that you purchase. That's liquidiv.com, use code TWND and let them know we sent you. Now back to the show. That was really good. I just came up with that on the fly. I'm pretty proud of that, actually. Pat, pat, pat. That was fun. All right. So now we're going to move on to the supernatural. And I'm not sorry about that because that was actually amazing. And that just like flew out of my mouth. And sometimes when things like fly out of my mouth, I'm like, ah, because it's terrifying uh, speaking words to people and hoping that they come out. I've always been better at writing than speaking. This is a terrible I'm sorry we're only 19 minutes in this is wild all right so now we are going to hear finally finally after all this time if I'm done yapping could you just fucking stop no I never can and I also need to fill time because this is crazy all right um I do what I want 
My grandma had a very strong spirit. Oh, mine did too. And once, once still alive, but her spirit, it's strong, but it is flawed. I was with her when she died and I felt her spirit leave. Well, you said left, but I read leave and I'm sorry. I, but I felt her, I felt when her spirit, oh, I was with her and she died and I felt when her spirit left. Oh, I'm just stupid. Sorry. I'm just dumb. Sorry. I can't read. Sorry. I was homeschooled. Sorry that I just like read what I want to read and then act superior. Sorry. I am actually, I was with her when she died and I felt when her spirit left. Not long after she died, we had a few unusual things happen. Hmm. My mom came to work one day at a large company and turned on her computer to start her day. When the screen came to life, it had my grandmother's name displaying on it and nothing else. What the fuck? Are you sure someone from IT wasn't just fucking with her, though? I, like, that that would be super fucked up. But people, as they say on Morbid, people are always going to people. Um, that, that seems pretty, that seems pretty fucked. On another occasion, my parents had done some rearranging and had the phone off of the wall in their bedroom. Uh, one night, this phone rang and woke them up. There's no way this phone should have been able to ring. Okay, but like, why? If they had rearranged, why was the wall still off? Or why was the phone still off the wall? I can't speak. Oh my God. Why is speaking so hard? It's like, so here's the thing too. When I was here, I'm so sorry to sidebar on this. When I was younger, I'm not sorry to sidebar. I'm always going to, one thing about me, I'm going to sidebar. I'm going to make a story last 20 times longer than it actually should. And everyone's going to be annoyed with me by the end of it. And that's okay. Cause that's who I am. All right. I... I've mentioned this on the show before, I think, but I had like speech therapy for like the brief minute that I wasn't homeschooled. And we did like tongue push ups with like M&Ms and Skittles and shit and the whole treat reward system. Anyway, it was this whole thing. But I still have these moments when I get like too excited. Does anyone else do this when you get like really excited to be talking to someone or like you're also kind of nervous? And I had this happen when I was in LA. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking embarrassing but i'll do this thing where i like almost will like swallow my fucking tongue i'll just be talking and i'm like oh the words are happening and i'm trying to think about what i'm going to say next and like you know what how my voice should sound when the words are coming out and if i'm like speaking too loudly or anything like that and i totally overthink it and i will just choke on my tongue like out of nowhere i'll just be talking like this and i it's what is that why, like, why does that happen? And also, like, why do I have to think so hard about w what my tongue is doing to make sure that I don't, like, lift? And I can fall right into it so easily because that's, I'm, I'm actively thinking all the time, like, don't lisp, don't lisp, don't lisp. Even now, saying that, like, I'm, like, actively thinking this is how your tongue has to be so it doesn't come out like lisp. So, anyway, I don't remember where I was going with that. It doesn't really matter. Um... I can't speak words. So there's no way this phone should have been able to ring. It needed power from the jack on the wall to which it was not plugged in. Okay. So it wasn't plugged in. One last thing. I heard the sound of water rushing late one night. <laughs> Me too. Very recently after I was woken up by my neighbor pounding on my door. Um, I listened to where I was coming from and found the faucet on the back of the house had been opened all the way up. I went to turn it off, but it took me 10 minutes to access it because it hadn't been used in years and had things stored in front of it. Oh, that's wild. Here's the thing, though. Like, why? Like, that's pretty rude of your grandma if, if that was the case to, like, just, like, run water in the basement and then, like, ruin all the stuff around it. That's, like, does she have unfinished business, perhaps? Oh. Mm. I, I swear there was like this time like at my last house and I don't know if I've said this on the podcast before but there was this time that I was like late at night and so it was this weird like two like level house right and there was like a spiral little tiny staircase that I would always slip down and the stairs were white and I'd get down there with the Mr. Clean thing and rub them all off it was crazy I felt like Cinderella in my own fucking house I'm like what the fuck I have to everything was so white like ah just glaring anyway I hated it so <laughs> what was the thing ghosts all right so it was very late at night and 
I was getting like water or something like that. And I noticed that there was this light on in the living room. So you'd go around the corner and you could kind of see from the kitchen this little light in the corner. And I was like, oh, I thought I'd turn that off. So I go to start walking towards it and a shadowy, like a person, I swear to God, it was like the exact shape of a person, but like in motion, walks past the open of this doorway. So now there's a wall, right? And then the room goes on the side of the wall and then there's the hallway. So he walks like that. Where would he come from? There was no door there. It was just like a wall and then the entrance into the, so it was very weird. And then I go around cause I was like freaked out. I seriously grabbed a kitchen knife because that's how freaked out I was <laughs> to grab the kitchen knife, go around and there's just fucking nothing there. And that was very weird, but then nothing else happened. So I don't know. It was strange. Um, Wait, I need to play this again. Onomatopoeia. 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 Mm. Um, we also have a new soundboard. I can't remember what all of them were, though. Mm. No, stop. 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 The poltergeist is still among us. What the fuck? Oh, I don't like that. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh. <sighs> it was really fun. So this is all I will say about it. But if you have not listened to the Josh Potter show, I will be appearing on the Josh Potter show in some upcoming episode. Um, Josh Potter is a comedian and he is a friend of mine. And I feel weird saying that because I don't know. We're not like. I don't know if other people consider me. I think he considers me a friend. I hope so. Well, anyway, that's my friend. And if you have not listened to his show, please go listen to it. It's called The Josh Potter Show. Um, it's also on YouTube. I think it's just anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And he's really cool. He's a great comedian. So if he's ever in your area, go check him out. He is sick. And so I got to hang out at the comedy store, which I've never been to before. I've only like seen photos of it and, you know, seen people at it, clips from it and stuff like that. But it was so cool. It was like so old school, like all this red lighting. You could see everybody's name, like in cursive up on the wall. And it was so fucking cool. But going through it reminded me of a sex club because <laughs> everything is so dark. There's all this red lighting. There's like art and stuff like that. Everything is like it's older, right? It's really old. It's a historical building. So it's, it's a little run down. Like some of the stairs kind of like bend backwards. And it just reminded me just getting the tour of the place so much of a sex club, like little more intimate rooms, like, and stuff like that. It's like, a, this would be a voyeur room for sure. You know what I mean? And it just cracked me up, but it was really cool. It was a very fun time. And I got to meet Johnny Pemberton, which is really, really cool. Um, because I, I really like the Fallout series. Um, those of you who listen or talk with me on OnlyFans, you know I love the Fallout series. So that was really, really fun. Um, and I told a bunch of people um, my Queef origin story. Honey, what does it make you think of? Sweet, delicious, sticky, licking it off your partner? If you want to have fun with a special friend or are someone who loves self-pleasure, Honey Playbox has the toys for you. Use our code TWND to save 15% on your purchase. Amp up your playtime at honeyplaybox.com. You deserve pleasure, so elevate your experience with Honey Playbox and support our show by using code TWND at checkout. Watching podcasts is fun. Watching reruns, also fun. But nothing beats a live experience. Check out our friends at Jerkmate by going to jkmte.com slash twnd. Every sign up helps our show. Don't jerk alone. Get your front row seat to live events. Try Gold Show from the comfort of your couch. Check the show description or go to jkmte.com slash twnd to try it out. And it was fun. <laughs> Anyway, it was very fun. The laughter just made me think of that. And it was it was a great time. And I don't normally like LA. Um, so it was very nice. But fuck, LA is really icky. Like so much driving through certain areas of the city. I was just like, oh my God. Uh, there's I'm sure there's places like that in Vegas too that I haven't been to. I just felt like 
maybe Vegas just hides it better, but I felt like LA was like worse than the last few times I had been there. And it's always been a little like, ooh, like in some areas, but I don't know. But overall, the experience was very good. And it was the people that made it. My Uber driver was actually sick too. Had like a really interesting conversation with him about like the state of the world and how he was affected by COVID and like his family and stuff like that. And like, you know, saying things about how he felt like a lot of people in LA, he's like, and this was his experience. You know, I don't live there. I don't, I only know a couple of people from there, but he said like the overall experience was that everybody is kind of just like out for themselves. It's like always a competition and but a lot of people are like struggling right now. And he said it's very much this thing of like trying to get people in trouble. You know, it's, 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 is that thing where it feels like there are a lot of instances where people just don't care about each other. Do you know what I mean? Like they don't care about what they're like, how, what they're doing may affect other people around them or they, it's, <sighs> caring too much about things that like you shouldn't care about like other people's opinions like because everyone's entitled to their own opinions everyone has their own experiences that have shaped and sculpted them into the person that they are and just because you you know, can look at someone doesn't mean that you have any idea what kind of life that they've led up until this moment of your interaction with them you don't know what kind of day they've had you don't know the you know any of the backstory, basically, everybody has so much lore. Every single person has lore that we just have no idea about. And usually it will take like years and years and years of building and cultivating a friendship or relationship with someone to get through all of that lore. And I feel like there's still more that unfolds because you just like, you can't ever really fully know someone because we're always changing. It's like we we're talking about earlier, you know, change happens. And so much is just like, just because you have a belief in something, just because you have your opinion, that does not invalidate someone else's opinions or beliefs because they are not you. And if everyone was just the same person and thought all the same thing, like what would be the point for existing? Because like even I'm someone who is very open to like having my mind changed on things. And I think that talking to other people, even if, even if you ha can have a conversation with someone, right. About what it is that they believe or, you know, what their values are, even if having that conversation doesn't change how you think and feel, that doesn't mean that the way that you think and feel is correct for that person. Do you know what I mean? But there's also an instance of like, if, if you really believe in something, I think that you should be able to have a conversation with someone who does not believe that same thing. Because if you are not open to having your ideas or your thoughts challenged, then I don't really think that you believe in them as much as you posture that you do. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like, if, if I believe something right and, you know, say that I have, you know, something that I'm just very steadfast on it, if I have a conversation with someone and it makes me perhaps doubt what I thought before, that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned, because then it gives me more opportunity to really evaluate why it is that I feel this way or to do research on a subject to figure out why maybe I could feel a different way or why other people have those experiences or think those things. But I feel like so many people are just like, it's my way or the highway. And I think that that's very bad for growth as a person. Like maybe... Maybe you've seen people change and because everybody does, but maybe not necessarily in a good way. Maybe it, maybe it's not as open-minded as people like to think they are. I feel like some people are very open-minded until they realize that maybe what you are bringing to the table is not exactly in line with what they think. And I have friends who think and feel so many different things, whether it's about jobs or whether it's about politics or whether it's about fucking literally anything like relationships with their family, like so many people from so many different walks of life. And I think it's given me a nice way to try to understand people more because I'm 
always been someone who's very much trying to figure out people because I don't really feel like I'm a person that belongs in most groups of people. In fact, no groups of people because I don't like have a big group of people. I don't have a huge circle of friends. I have like some circles that I can kind of feel adjacent to and comfortable in, but I have a lot of people that I have talked to on a very deep and personal level from so many different walks of life. And I think that it's helped me gain an appreciation for the fact that we are very small. And even though things that happen to us feel very big and are very big, there's so many people. (laughs) Think about all the terrible things that have happened to you. And now think about the fact that your neighbor probably has at least half the things or similar things or a big laundry list of other things you couldn't even fucking comprehend. Right. And so I think that if people could just talk more without just having, it's like people talk, but don't listen, I think is one of the biggest things. And so there's just like a lot said and it's all just fucking noise. But also some people are listening to this right now and they're like, what you're saying is just like a bunch of fucking noise. And that's okay. And that's cool because that's your experience and that's your belief. And I think that what I'm saying is fucking cool. So suck my dick. You know what? Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. How about that? So now we are going to look up. Oh, look, fuck. Got 30 minutes in. Whew. We're getting there, fam. We're getting there. Trust me. There's not too much more of me. I promise. Um, mm. <laughs> Fuck, I really do a lot of fucking tangents. <laughs> anyway, I talked the ear off my Uber driver. It was crazy. Um, ba, ba, ba. David did some lovely research for me, so I'm very excited. So we are going to get into basically the myths of our childhood or old wives' tales, as they say. Isn't that what they say? Something like that. What do they call it? Old where? the phrase old wives <laughs> like what about the young wives what about the fucking young wives did they not have tales all right the phrase old wives tale originated from the tradition of older women passing down advice to younger generations in the form of easy to remember saying all right um the wives don't refer only to married women though oh well okay oh the term came from the old english word whiff which means woman a whiff Ooh, that sounds gross. I don't want to be called a whiff. That's disgusting. All right. So we're going to look into one of our first myths. So David has pulled a little list that I will be uh, searching from. So first we're going to do Mountain Dew lowered sperm count. Hmm. So if this is true, that means um, I know a way that I can get cream pied. Just copious amounts of Mountain Dew. (laughs) Mountain Dew lowering sperm count. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Medical news today. And I have to remember to actually send this to David. So David, uh, Mountain Dew. Look at me being all responsible and make a big list for David. Wait, does this have a period at the end of it? Oh my god, it does. What? What? All right, and then what can we learn about this from medical news today? Does Mountain Dew kill sperm? Mountain Dew does not kill sperm, contrary to popular myth. There are two reasons why some people mistakenly believe Mountain Dew kills sperm. Caffeine and yellow dye number five. Actually, yellow dye number five, making your dick small, I think is another one that David's sent in yes yellow yellow five makes your dick shrink okay we're gonna we're gonna get really into the science behind this all right um these ingredients are in mountain dew but not in high enough quantities to kill sperm okay though mountain dew does not affect fertility many other unrelated factors can cause sperm counts and wait can lower sperm counts and affect male fertility these include low testosterone (laughs) smoking obesity and diabetes exercising quitting smoking and losing weight are some ways to improve fertility yeah okay like we don't want i don't want to be fertile though let's be honest okay mountain dew does not affect fertility as required the reputation of impacting fertility mainly um 
does yellow okay so we're gonna we're gonna do all right does yellow dye five affect fertility yellow dye five is one of the most commonly used food additives the chemical name of yellow dye five is tartazine oh, wait tartrazine tartrazine is what gives mountain dew its yellow color also people often cite that tartrazine is a potential allergen as part of the myth there are not many current studies on the effects of tartrazine on fertility. One study in rats, although dating back to 1988, was published in Food and Chemical Toxicology and indicated no adverse effects to consuming tartrazine. The U.S. Food and Drug has approved color additives, blah, 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 blah. Tartrazine does pose a risk of allergy to a small portion of the population, so some people might be allergic to Mountain Dew. People who are allergic to tartrazine may experience side effects from its consumption. The side effects include eczema, asthma, and hyperactivity. Mm. Oh my god. Wait. Does my brother... <laughs> my brother drinks so much Mountain Dew. It's so funny to me. But um, the tartrazine makes me laugh because when, he, when we were kids, he had asthma. But did he have eczema and hyperactivity? I don't know. Bro, you might want to check it out. Um, proven factors that can affect... I don't care about the sperm count. Okay, this is getting too it. So basically, let's suffice it to say that that is indeed a myth. Mountain Dew does not lower your sperm count. And yellow 5, I guess, does not affect your fertility either. I don't know if it makes your dick shrink, though. Should we check that? Okay. Does yellow... Five. I would assume not make your dick shrink. It does not shrink your penis. It is safe for human consumption. All right. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. So apparently it does not. It does not. So don't worry about it. Eat your yellow dye five. It's totally fine. It's apparently safe for consumption. All right. Mm, ba, ba, ba. Let's do Marilyn Manson removed a rib so he could blow himself. Did that? I, I remember hearing. Okay, but I never know if it was real or not. Marilyn, Marilyn Manson removing rib. Okay. So this is from Lad Bible. What the fuck is Lad Bible? <laughs> what is this for? Uh, I'm sending this link to Dave. Okay. Um, Marilyn Manson once addressed the playground rumor about him getting his rib removed. Um, ba -ba -bum. Let's not beat around the bush. We've all heard the rumor that Marilyn Manson once got one of his ribs removed so he could suck his own ding dong. <laughs> Ding dong, that's adorable. And the singer who recently settled an abuse lawsuit with Game of Thrones actor. Ugh, I don't care about that. I don't care about the other drama. Just answer. Why is it this thing? So this person who recently did this thing with this other person was then going to do this thing. By the time, just fucking tell the details. What you're adding, it's not flowery. It's not engaging. It's just pissing me off. What are we doing? Just get to the fucking facts. Lad Bible. Jesus Christ. Word salad. All right. The rumor spread like wildfire. It didn't take long for fans of Manson from all across the world to start questioning its authenticity. Um, it was a rumor that was started on the internet by an unknown user. Um, bah, bah, bah. So in a Q&A session on an issue of Q Magazine, Manson was finally asked a question from a man named Keith Rathbone. It's a fun name. He asked, for years it was rumored... Sorry, he asked... For years, it was rumored that you had a rib removed to achieve self-fellatio. Manson replied, Wow, does Keith get money if I answer this? No comment, Keith, you cunt. <laughs> what? Uh Okay, I'll send Manson's autobiography, The Long Hard Road Out of Hell, the singer wrote, If I really got my ribs removed, I would have been busy sucking my own dick on the Wonder Years instead of chasing Winnie Cooper. Plus, it was really... Who really has the time to be killing puppies when you can be sucking your own dick? I think I'm going to call the surgeon in the morning. Um, okay. So he has not had a, remo a rib removed to suck his own dick. I think that, that would it would be very extreme to remove a rib to suck your own penis, especially like when you could get... when I feel like when you're Marilyn Manson, it's like you could get anyone to suck your dick. You know what I mean? So like, why? Why bother? All right. Um, yeah, I don't... 
Maybe he couldn't, though. I mean, I don't really look at Marilyn Manson, but <laughs> now I'm like, <laughs> I want to look at, because, like, it came up, right? But I'm like, this photo is like, this is not, he looks like if Severus Snape wore makeup, but, like, he has, like, huge lips, though. Are his lips real? They're crazy huge. I don't know if it's just the lipstick, but. He has beautiful full lips, but like the rest of it, he just, um, right here, he looks like the penguin. <laughs> David, I'm going to send this to you. <laughs> he looks like the, the penguin, um, from Batman here. Um, I'll add this in. Here's the penguin. Oh, wait, damn it. Damn it. What have I done? Sorry, David. There we go. I'll send this for now. David's going to be like, what the fuck? All right. Um, what is the next rumor we can address? Because I don't want to look at Marilyn Manson anymore. It's, I don't, I don't like it. All right. Sorry, Marilyn Manson. All right. The green M&Ms make you horny. Isn't the green M&M the lady M&M? I think that has to be, I'm going to go on, on, I'm just going to say right now, I don't think the green M&Ms make you horny. Or Wait. No, is the green... Which m and the lady? I thought there was a green m and lady. Yeah, okay, there she is. All right, I, I thought she was... Okay, that's totally rude. Um, green m and making you horny. <laughs> horny. All right. Oh, Reddit knows. Reddit knows everything. Um... Are you familiar with the green M&M's make you horny urban legend? No, I have not heard of this urban legend. And ba -ba -ba -ba. We all know how much I love making content. And one of the most important things for quality videos is lighting. But who wants the same old boring ring light? You can upgrade from basic to adorable at kawaiilighting.com with code TWND for 10% off. This podcast is lit by Kawaii Lighting's star-shaped ring light. There are also heart and kitty cat options to make you feel as cute as these lights look. Kawaii Lighting has many RGB options, which you'll have seen use in many of my videos and photos. Don't be basic. Stand out with Kawaii Lighting by using code TWND to save 10% and help support this wholesome pod. Let them know we sent you. Uh... It was Van Halen, and it was brown M&Ms. What is going on? All right, hang on. I'm going to have to deep dive on this. Um, Snopes. Okay, here we go. Fucking Snopes. Green M&Ms as aphrodisiacs. All right. This is a legend. Stop, Snopes. I don't want to answer the fucking question. <sighs> I'm just trying to learn. Just let me learn. All right, the Mars Company of Hackettstown, New Jersey, has been producing m M&M chocolate candy since 1941. That's a really long time. Although the peanut variety was introduced in 1954. Various rumors have been attached to different colors of the candy. The green ones are an aphrodisiac. If the last candy out of a bag is red, make a wish and it will come true. If the last candy out of the bag is yellow, you should call in sick and stay home. Orange M&Ms are good luck, but brown ones are bad luck. That's sus. M&M's Mars knows that all these rumors are developed by consumers, not the company. The room that these green candies are an aphrodisiac recently or apparently started or first gained prominence in the 70s when students reportedly picked the green ones out of the package to feed to the objects of their desires. <laughs> Can you just imagine? <laughs> you're, you're there just getting ready to make sweet loves in the dorm bed. And you're just like being fed green M&Ms. Like you're going to have a mouthful of chocolate before you give head. What are we doing? No, I don't want to be fed green M&Ms. That, that <laughs> sounds terrible. I don't even like M&Ms. I am going to go. I'm, I'm going to throw something controversial out there. I don't like M&Ms. I don't think they're tasty. I think that it, they're weird. I don't like that they're crispy on the outside. But then like the weird candy coating. I don't like it. I don't think that they're good. And if someone brought me back for the sex and then started feeding me green M&Ms, I would be so pissed off. I would not be horny. So I'm glad that this is a legend because that's 
that's just terrible. I can't even, you're going to give a blow job when you have a mouthful of chocolate. That's insane. That's insane. I don't want to do it. Perhaps it was because the color green has always been associated with healing and fertility. Blah, 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 blah. I love this. The company itself routinely states it cannot explain any extraordinary powers attributed to green M&Ms, either scientifically or medically. Oh, thank you. So you're, you're saying you're going on record. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're going on record saying that um, M&Ms don't give you magical powers. Is that what you're telling me right now? What? What do you mean? It's the only reason I've been eating them. These are terrible. They're going to... No one's going to buy M&M's anymore. They're not magical. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. If you eat a watermelon seed, it will grow in your belly. Um, this is not true. If, but I remember, I do remember hearing that, but it was something like the white seeds are fine, but if you swallow like the really dark, like big watermelon seeds, that it would grow in your belly. And I've, I'm going to also go on record and say, I'm also not a fan of watermelon. I'm sorry. I don't think that there is like, I like watermelon flavoring, but the, but the watermelon has to be so perfect. You have to fully scrape out all the seeds or you get like a weird texture mix in there. It has to be the perfect ripeness, ripeness. It has to be the perfect ripeness for me to actually fully enjoy the watermelon. It's going to have to have the full ripeness because if it doesn't have the full ripeness there's just no way that i'm going to be eating this watermelon and i don't know what else to tell you <laughs> because otherwise it's like you're biting into something that's like crispy like it's almost like why don't i just eat celery why don't i just be miserable and eat celery if it's like too pale of a pink then it's like not good if it has to be that really dark like uh, freshness so what was i Watermelon. If you eat, <laughs> fuck me. If you eat a watermelon seed, will it grow in your stomach? I want a watermelon, baby. Your stomach, full of its acidic digestive juices, oh my, is not a hospitable place for plants to grow. What? <laughs> I wanted to grow a succulent. <laughs> Even though they won't grow into a watermelon in your belly, many people still avoid eating watermelon seeds. If you diligently pick out the seeds from your slice of watermelon, that's fine. Wait, but if it, that's fine, like, but should you? Um, even if they don't want to eat them, you can save them up for a watermelon seed spitting contest. What? <laughs> Why would you? Hang on. Watermelon seeds. Is this a thing? Watermelon seed. <laughs> what? No, shut up. Watermelon seed spitting contests are a popular event at fairs and festivals where participants spit watermelon seeds as far as they can. Wait. They have tips for winning. Oh my God. Am I going to win? Should I do this for Patreon? Choose. Okay. Some tips for winning include choosing a heavy seed <laughs> oh my the heavier the seed the easier it is to propel oh yeah you're gonna position the seed place the seed on your tongue with a tapered end facing out oh okay so then it's like a bullet like Pichoo! use your lungs well i was gonna use my nose but okay blow out with lung power to propel the seed <laughs> All right. Practice. The best spitters hone their skills early. How young do you start practicing to spit watermelon seeds out of your mouth? That's insane. Okay. Here are some details about watermelon seed spitting contests. <laughs> Contestants usually get two spits and the seed that lands farthest wins. The seed must fall within the boundaries of a painted spitway, not the spitway, and the spitter can't cross the line. <laughs> Uh, competitors, some contests divide kids into age groups. It's okay. So it's just for kids. Well, this guy has a video doing it and he does not look like a child to me. He has a beard. All right. I need to look up someone spitting watermelon seeds, spitting, wait, watermelon <laughs> seed spitting contest. Wait, world record. Hang on now. David, you'll have to mute this ad. 
comes through. Um, that's too long. The World Championship. Wait, this guy looks so interesting. Okay, this is the guy. Bob Williams. All right, David, I'm going to save this link. I'm going to send it to you now. <laughs> Watermelon seeds. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, I'm going to... We're going to hear from Bob Williams right now. So check out best... This is from Best Documentary on YouTube. Well, there's an ad. Oh, I have it muted already. Perfect. All right, we're going to skip. Wait. Hey, no, restart, sir. Hang on. My name is Bob Williams. And we're here in Partyville, and we're having the Partyville. Watermelon Seed Spitting Championships. We Fuck yeah, you are, Bob. Watermelons were grown in the area, and maybe it'd be a fun contest. <laughs> so in a three-week period... Wait! <laughs> These shirts are so good. Okay, okay, here we have speed. Okay, you have little eyes and the watermelon slice is the mouth and her number or his number, I can't tell. There are boobs here, so his or hers, I'm not sure whose tits these are. But the number is on a full watermelon as the nose. David will have a photo, I'm sure. Speed eating and speed spitting championships. This is amazing. So in a three-week period, they're like, you know what? got a lot of watermelons growing in the area you we know what we should do we should have a watermelon spitting contest and we're gonna make shirts and we're gonna get pins and this is gonna be and this is partyville man partyville 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 yeah it's a fucking party in party <laughs> the contest is really a fun, uh... wait they're they're carving watermelons like they're pumpkins this is crazy. These look like gourds. <laughs> Why are there so many watermelons here? What can you carve? Okay. Uh, you know, that's when they get all different odd-shaped melons, and the kids get very creative, and they'll uh, even give them a knife. They dust them with a knife, and they'll do all kinds of carving with little characters. Oh, my God. Okay, so they have a fish. <laughs> I have a watermelon fish. This is crazy. They love watermelons. That's so cute. Oh, I think that's a spider and a penguin. Maybe this is crazy. A chicken. Oh my God. That's actually so cute. The little chicken is adorable. They are so talented. That's so funny. That's so many fish inside of a little, um, that they built like a little tank too, for those who are just listening. Is anyone listening? I'm like, you know what? Let's figure out about watermelon spinning contest. They're bowling with watermelon. This is incredible. This is insane. I love Partyville. Spitting draws an awfully lot of entrance. It's an event where you can do all the things which your mother said you should not do. You. <laughs> All those things your mother said not to do, come down to Partyville, come to our watermelon festival, and you can do all those things your mom said not to do. Drugs, everything. This is crazy. Oh my God. See, those seeds are so huge, David. Go back and look at the seeds. They're so huge. I've always hated, that's what I always hated was having to pick out the seeds. And when I was younger, I bit my fingernails. So I couldn't just like scoop them with my fingernails. So I have like finger like punching in and like pulling out these massive seeds. Ugh, I hate them. The texture. I'm afraid I'll choke on them. Professional tobacco spitters are not allowed to spit. What? Excuse me? Professional tobacco spitters? Um, how many people in Partyville have a profession of spitting? Watermelon? Tobacco? Oh, I'm sorry. No tobacco spitters here. You're too hard. You're too hard for us. We can't possibly beat the tobacco spitters. Why not? It's their job. They've trained for this moment, and you're going to leave them out of the spitting contest? That's so rude. We have a 100 foot tape measure which is secured to the uh, launch pad. <laughs> I got it, guys. <laughs> Catch me in Partyville. Entering the seats. <laughs> I can't. 
<laughs> they have a scene sweepers too. <laughs> but you know what's oh my god, I'm falling over. You know what's against the rules though? You can't slap your partner on the back. <laughs> Can you imagine? This will be the extra boost we need. Oh, <laughs> They have whole categories. They have whole categories and everything. Men over 55. What were the other ones? Hey God, where is this? Senior men's over 55. Senior women over 55. Junior, junior men, I assume. That is so funny. They have all these categories. That's... This is really well done. For three weeks' time to come up with this in Partyville of all places. I mean, although here's the thing. How did you know to do this already? Is it because of the tobacco spitters? Did the professional tobacco spitters help you set this up and then you leave them out of the contest? Partyville. Come on. <laughs> I just want to be a part of something. <laughs> this is so crazy. What is this guy's hat? Oh my god. David at 138. This guy's hat looks like a pussy. It's just like a oh wait, is it supposed to be a watermelon seed? Or is it just a really strange hat? I can't tell what this hat is. It's like a combination of a cowboy hat, a pirate hat, and a pussy. I don't really understand what this hat is. That's great. It's like a mohawk cowboy hat. Get ready for this. Watermelon eating contest. Ugh, it's like my worst nightmare. Especially because you still you can see all those seeds in there. You can see all the little dark seeds and I ugh. No. Oh my god, this kid is housing. <laughs> David at two at two minutes and two seconds. Check this. Oh, he fucking loves it. Okay, I have to stop looking up watermelon stuff. Nobody even cares more. No one's listening. It's fine. We're at an hour. So let's look up one more myth and then I can leave you guys. I'm so sorry. I got so immersed in you know what? I'm not sorry because this is entertaining. All right. I'm entertaining myself. It's on camera. It's recorded. And if you're not having fun, then you probably have already stopped listening. So who gives a shit? You know what I'm saying? No, it doesn't matter. All right. So if you swallow gum, it stays in your stomach for seven years. I think that that is false. If you swallow gum, it stays in. Here we go. Because the thing about the hair too i know i've talked about this on an episode i had this you know woman growing up and she told me because i chewed on my hair like because it was just so tasty and i just and then when i couldn't chew my hair anymore guess what fingernails never never had them again until adulthood um and divorce so <laughs> but she told me that i would get a giant hairball in my stomach and it could like kill me and apparently that's not real either but no, swallowed gum does not stay in your stomach for seven years. Instead, it passes through your digestive system and is excreted in your stool in 24 to 48 hours. Ugh. Although the human body can't digest the gum base, it can digest the other ingredients in the gum, like sweeteners and flavorings. The gum base is made up of butyl rubber, the same rubber used to make inner tubes. Ugh. Ugh. So you're just like, wait, wait, wait. You're just, wait, hang on. Hang on. So what you're telling me is we, when we chew gum, hang on. <laughs> when we chew gum, we're just chewing on flavored tires. <laughs> is that what you're telling me? Is you are you telling me that we are basically just, we're just chewing on the Michelin man? We're just, hang on. Inner, oh, inner tubes, not tires. I can't fucking read, but still inner tubes. What? Okay. Inner tube. Inner tube. Oh, yeah. So just a big inner tube. Wait, is an inner tube like the floaty things? Because this looks like tires, for, like for bicycle tubes. All right, bicycle tube, passenger tube. What's a passenger tube? 
Anyway, we're chilling on, we're, we're chewing on tubes. We're chewing on tubes. I don't want to tell you. I never want to eat gum again in my life. I never want to chew it. I don't even want to chew it. Cause that's, I'm just chewing on rubber. That's crazy. But then it's cool. I guess that your body's just like, oh, I can't do anything with this rubber. And it just like poops right out. That's fun. All right. Um, but some people have experienced constipation after swallowing large amounts of gum over a long period of time. It can lead to blockage called a, a bizarre. Which is which can cause intestinal concerns. Oof. Yeah, don't eat too much gum. I, I would have to imagine how much gum, how much gum um, would you have to ingest to get a blockage? Mm, swallowing a lot of gum in a short period of time, say one piece a day for a week, or a megawad consisting. <laughs> Not the megawad consisting of four pieces of gum at a time can put your digestive system in danger. So up to four pieces. Don't recommend four. Try to keep it at three. If you're going to swallow your gum, only three pieces at a time. Or at least space it out over over some weeks of time. Or you're going to get a blockage. You're not going to be able to poop. It'll be because of gum because you swallowed pieces of inner tube. I don't know what to tell you. <sighs> this has been fun. So uh, follow me on Instagram um, at this redhead is SFW. Follow me on TikTok at Leave Molly Alone. You can follow the podcast on Instagram and X at TWND Podcast. Um, you can be leaving your voicemails at 702 900 6446. All of your stories, your questions, your concerns, whatever kind of shit that you want to talk about, have it, do it, love it. Actually, wait, we do have a voicemail, but um, yeah, fuck it. Let's do a voicemail. Let's do a voicemail to end it out. But we're going to end it with this. So it better be good. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem. I don't really know what to tell you. All right. Hi, ladies. I love the show. And I have a Roku app on my television. It's a, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I have a YouTube app on my Roku television. There we go. And I watch you guys every week on it. For some reason, episode 169 is not coming up on the Roku app, but I can send it to my television wirelessly via my... So, the reason that episode 169, I assume at the time of, you know, this voicemail, it was not coming up because it had not been posted because my house had been flooded. So if you're not on Patreon, you are missing out on updates like that. If you're not following us on social media um at twnd podcast you'll be missing out on things like that and that would be why that would be why however however if you want episodes a day early and you never want to miss out on anything because i've been consistent all the times on the patreon even when external things happen we can't get things on youtube right away they are on patreon a day early and you get no ads you get extra bonus episodes you get behind the scenes content you get all of our skits you get the all the the music the craziness the photo sets everything that we do is behind the paywall at patreon.com slash twnd podcast and you can join our discount um dirtbag tier or our upper dirtbag tier if you want to show a little extra support it's how we pay david it's how we keep the show running and i have to say thank you all um for joining me today on this my solo episode and your homework for this week is to see how far you can spit a watermelon seed just see um swallow it if you want to apparently you won't grow a watermelon in your belly because your belly is toxic and it's not hospitable for growth. So you also cannot grow a succulent or anything else in your stomach that you want to. And yeah, if you want to email twndpodcast at gmail.com and you find out how far you can spit your watermelon seed, we would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you Monday. Come! The Totally Wholesome Not Dirty Podcast is presented by TWND Productions, created and hosted by Molly Stewart, co-hosted by Laura Contreras, and produced by David Warren. 